as the dishwasher. Right on cue. It wouldn't be one of my hauls without the dishwasher now, would it? I do not need another jug. <sighs> Help. <laughs> You're so glad you come for this content. everyone how's everyone doing hope you're all well so I have a few things that I got from the jumble sale this weekend and when I say a few things I mean a few <laughs> it wasn't amazing um, but a couple of interesting bits so I hope you'll enjoy just counting it up I think there's about eight items here that I got from the jumble sale and then we went into a charity shop and I got a couple of other things that I'm really pleased with. Um, so without further ado, I'll show you what I got. Um, the first thing, <laughs> you may have spied in the background. I was about to pick up something else and I thought, oh yeah, well, you're going to be able to see this anyway. Wonder what this is. This is the first thing that I spotted even before we got in the door. So we always turn up a bit earlier and start queuing and there were three people ahead of us. So thankfully we could queue in the foyer because it was a bit rainy and cold. One of the doors was open and I could just see some framed prints on the inside and this was one of them. And I said to Nick, I'm gonna grab that. As soon as we walk in, that's the first thing I'm gonna grab because we both love David Hockney. Now I'm gonna to have to stand up and show you because it's a big one. So, I don't know if I'll even get it all in. There we are. So we both love David Hockney. And this is a print from his exhibition at the Royal Academy of Arts. And I absolutely love the colours in this. It was only three pounds. It's in an Ikea frame. Um, but it's a really nice frame, to be honest with you. I really like it. And we did look it up on eBay. So, um, some of the prints were going for about £30. But we weren't sure if this has actually been trimmed to fit in, in the frame. Um, and then we decided that we really like it anyway. So it's not something that we would sell. We're going to find a home for this in the house. For £3. You can't go wrong, can you? So... That's going to find a lovely home in our house. So I was thrilled with that. There were three women in front of me and I was just thinking, oh, please don't let them be thinking they're going to get it first. Because <laughs> I've really got my eye on that. And thankfully they walked straight past and went to clothes. So I just like, yes, I'll have that. <laughs> um, so that was the first thing. And then I went straight to the bric-a-brac table, as I always do. And I spotted this little wicker lampshade. Um, I've bought and sold this sort of wicker lampshade in the past. Um, you can get about £15 for them. This one, however, is really quite grubby. Can you see? And I think it was probably only like 50p anyway. So I, I got it. But I'm not too sure how I'm going to clean this up. So if anyone's got any tips on how to clean a wicker lampshade, I would be really grateful. <laughs> I'd be very grateful for your advice on that. Um, the only thing that I was thinking is these bits of fabric, they're not wicker. I was thinking of maybe like soaking it for a while in like a, a tub of water with some fabric detergent um, or maybe making a solution of fabric detergent, maybe a bit of vanish or something, um, and just giving it a wipe over. I'm not sure if soaking it would ruin it, potentially. Um, hmm, it's a tricky one. That seems to make sense to me, fabric detergent, because that's what you would clean your clothes with, and as I say, this is fabric anyway. So those are my thoughts, but if you've got experience with that or 
you know somebody that's done that, then yeah, I would be really grateful for the advice. So thank you. Thank you in advance again. <laughs> and also, thank you for all your advice in my last video. Um, that was really useful. So um, I know I can always rely on you guys. So thank you. Um, right, what's next? Um, I did see this little box of National Trust coasters. Um, the box seen better days and it doesn't, I think it had a label on it which probably told you what the pattern was but then I looked inside and I went through them and for the most part they're really lovely. They all sort of, you know, they've got that kind of creamy look in the background all their colours are very vibrant. And then I got to this one. And that's obviously been sat in a window for a while. And this one's sort of halfway between. Um, so I thought, well, I'm not going to pick them up to resell. I asked how much they were. I think they were like 20p. So <laughs> I was like, okay then, I'm going to grab them for 20p because I'm probably not going to resell them but I think they would look really lovely in our cottage. So I have an abundance of coasters now. If you've seen any of my recent videos, then you'll have seen how many coasters I've picked up recently. I've gone from barely any to probably too many now. Um, <laughs> but at 20p, I couldn't leave them behind. So there we are. Um, that one I think I'll probably definitely just bin because it's it's seen better days, isn't it? This one I think is probably all right, but it's not quite as vibrant as the other ones. So along the same lines of picking up something that I liked but wasn't really sure whether it was worth picking up to resell or not, um, I saw these three amber glass bowls. I do love amber glass. Um, they're really pretty little sort of cereal dessert bowls. I couldn't see any kind of markings. I was looking to see if they were Arca Rock, but there's no markings on it. So I'm not sure if they're particularly branded. Um, I did look them up on eBay to see how much they might be worth reselling for. I could possibly get 10 pounds for a set of three. Um, <laughs> I'm collecting smoked glass rather than amber, even though I do love the amber glass. But what I had in mind is that it's my daughter's birthday this week. And we were in a charity shop recently and we saw some amber glass bowls and she pointed them out straight away, um, which I think she really liked. So I'm thinking of giving her these for her birthday because she could use them for desserts or cereals or whatever, but she could also use them in her room to put candles in or other trinkets and that kind of thing. So she could use them for, for decoration. So yeah, that's what my thinking was on that. Um, hopefully she'll really like them. Then if you saw my video with the, the Mason's bowl that I was so in love with, um, I have decided to keep that. I really like it. and. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, no, I just can't part with it. I love it too much. Um, and we picked up a mid-century jug recently. I don't know if I've shown you that one. I'll just grab it and then I'll show you. So we picked up this little mid-century jug recently. It's a Ridgeway. And we both really liked the mid-century design on it. So I have a jug, which is Paul Pottery. It's in the Blue Moon design. And I was using that for gravy and sauces, etc. Um, but we like this design so much that we decided to swap it out. I also picked up a terrine without a lid, which was identical to the colour, the Blue Moon colour, and looked very much like the jug that I had. And that's the reason why I picked it up. And that was ages ago. I think I got it at a yard sale or maybe a jumble. I can't remember. I picked that up because I thought you can always do with a bowl that you can just shove crisps in or something when you're entertaining. Um, and I thought, well, it, it matches my jug, so that's lovely. When I was researching and selling the jug, 
I came across the terrine and it is identical to the Blue Moon Paul Pottery terrine. So I'm pretty sure that the one that I had is Paul Pottery. And the ones that I saw that were listed didn't seem to have any markings on the bottom either. Um, so either they get washed off over the years because they're, they're a 1960s design, I think. Um, so either they get washed off or they never had any markings on in the first place, I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I'm 99.999% sure that the terrine that I have is Paul Pottery. And let me just show you, I'm waffling on, I'm going to show you what they look like. So, <laughs> this is the jug, this is the Blue Moon Paul Pottery jug. And as you can see, well perhaps you can't actually, um, there is there is a, a very faded mark on the bottom of this. I don't even know if you'd be able to see that. Oh, maybe. There we go. And then this is the terrine without the lid, which is so stylish. I love the colour and I love just the shape of it and everything. But there is no sign whatsoever of a mark on the bottom. But like I say, it was absolutely identical in every way. I even took my research up to Nick and I said, do you think this looks like this? And he says, yes, that's that. That is definitely that. <laughs> so what I've done now is I've listed these as a pair. So if anyone's interested in any Paul Pottery in the Blue Moon, um, it will be listed very shortly. I have it drafted. Um, I just need to do the photos. So I've gone off on such a tangent, I can't remember what my original point was. Uh, oh yeah, I was talking about the Mason's Bowl. So, yes, I decided that I was going to list that Paul Pottery bowl and swap it out for the Mason's Bowl. So I've swapped out the gravy jug, the Paul Pottery jug for this one, and I've swapped out the matching bowl listed those together and I'm keeping the mason's bowl. Hurrah! <laughs> You're so glad you come for this content. Anyway, because I'm very much drawn to that, that look of the mason's bowl, um, that red and white sort of classic country cottage um, design, I suppose you would say, I did spy this on the table and yes, I have promised myself I'm not buying more gravy jugs because they're not really worth a lot of money. But I couldn't help myself, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? So now I have the dilemma, do I keep this one? Because, again, I do not need another jug. Because as I've said, we're keeping this one. We both love the design of this one. And I've got the Kath Kidston one, slightly larger, that I use for, for gravy and sauces and whatever for family. But how beautiful. And it would go really well with my Mason's Bowl, wouldn't it? So now I'm, I have a brand new dilemma. Do I keep a gravy jug just for the sake of it and use it when I'm entertaining? Or <laughs> do I sell it? Because if I do sell it, it will be around the £10 mark. So is it worth my time listing it? Um, who's it by and what is it, you're asking me? Um, and I'm sure you're not actually. But <laughs> let me tell you anyway. It is Old Country Castles by British Anchor. So that's the design and the maker. And it doesn't have its um, saucer or plate or whatever you want to call it. Um, I did think to myself, if it had the saucer, I'd probably keep it in a heartbeat. So I don't know why. Mm. <sighs> Help. <laughs> I know that most of you will be enablers out there and you'll be telling me, keep it, keep it. It's so lovely and you do love it. Um, Probably by the time the next video comes out, I'll tell you I'm keeping that. Um, 
watch this space. And then in the same vein as the red and white classic pottery, we have this Wedgwood plate. There was a stack of plates on the table and I spotted this red and white one, so I pulled it out. I'm showing you the, the bottom, but you won't be able to read it. It says, Portraits of Great Georgians. Um, so as you can see, very famous Georgian people on it, <laughs> in the red and white pattern. So when I asked her how much was the plate and the jug, she said 70p, and I thought, okay, yeah. Not gonna argue with that, am I? Um, <laughs> I would never be a minimalist. I try so hard to, you know, talk myself out of keeping things in the house because I know that I don't like clutter really, but also I can't be a minimalist. And Jeff agrees, he's saying, Grr, mum, you, you have too much stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, what I was going to tell you, I'm going off on a tangent again. What I was going to tell you about this plate, since I've got it home, is it's been in, what do you call it? Two hours later. A plate hanger. Simple as that. It's been on a wall in a plate hanger. Um, and it has been slightly damaged. I don't know if you can see that little bit there where it's been scratched and you can see the damage on the back. Oh, the shadows and the lighting is terrible. Yeah, so you can see a little bit of the damage on the back here where it's been, been in and out of a plate hanger here as well. So that's kind of annoying. Other than that, I mean, there are no particular cracks or anything on it. Um, it's just the damage from, from it being mounted on a wall. Um, so that is annoying because one of these plates in blue sold for 20 pounds and there's a red and white one listed for 35. Um, so I was thinking probably 20 is more realistic, unless the red and white is more sought after for some reason, I don't know. Or somebody might just be hopeful. Um, <laughs> so yeah, because one sold for 20, I'm thinking that's more realistic. This one, however, with the damage, it's gonna be more like 15, isn't it? But when I saw the price, I was like, ooh, ooh, for my, um, 50p let's say, um, 20p maybe. I did quite well with that and I still have. I still have, but I just hope that the damage doesn't put a buyer off. Um, that's unfortunate. But I suppose if you're, you're wanting to display that anyway, then you'll probably put it back in a plate hanger and the damage won't even notice, so. I don't know, but I do rather like it. Red and white um, classic pottery seems to be one of my new things. One of the many. <laughs> right, what haven't I shown you yet? This is one of the favorite things I picked up and probably the thing that's worth the most. So it's this little plant pot. And again, I haven't done so well with plant pots. Um, I went through a stage of picking them up all the time. There's the dishwasher, right on cue. It wouldn't be one of my hauls without the dishwasher now, would it? Back to the plant pot. Um, I haven't done so well with plant pots. I, keep, I kept picking them up because I loved them and then they were just sitting around for ages. So I didn't pick this one up straight away. In fact, it was the last thing that I actually picked up and it sat there for a good half an hour. Nobody else bought it. And I think I was going through a second run as I do with Nick, just to see if there's anything that I've missed that catches my eye. And I saw this and I, I just thought I'd have a look, you know, see what it is. And it is vintage St. Michael 
and it is the bamboo design. So I thought, okay, it's vintage St. Michael, that's quite nice. It was, I don't know, 50p a pound at the most. I never remember after the fact. And I thought, yeah, I'll grab that. And I like it so much that I thought, you know, I could use that easily. Um, but I've looked it up and should get 25 for it. So, yeah, that's the best thing that I bought from the jumble. <laughs> And I'm quite pleased with that. And then I think this is the last thing that I bought from the jumble. And again, it was something that I dismissed at first because I, I didn't think it was probably worth very much and I was right. Um, but then at the end, I just thought, oh, I'm gonna, you know, prices are really good. I'm gonna get it anyway. And it is this little price in Kensington cottageware mug mug no it's not a mug it's a jug a <laughs> cottageware jug however i have bought a mug before one of the tall ones and done pretty well with that i think that went for like 12 pounds something like that um so i picked that up anyway because it's sweet weirdly when we went into the charity shop later on in the day they had a whole set of it but they really wanted quite a lot of money for it so i didn't I didn't get it, um, but because that was pennies, I picked it up. And it's gonna be worth five at the most if I put it on eBay, um, but I like it. So I think I'm gonna put it on my little shelves and keep it in the cottage. It fits, doesn't it? And it's really sweet. And you know, we always need more jugs, don't we? So, you know, if I need one, just, it, it's spare. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Um, right, okay, that was all I had from the jumble, but I bought a couple of things in the charity shop. The first thing that I bought was this Disney Mickey Mouse mug. Now, I paid three pounds for this, and Nick picked it up to start with and showed me, and he said, oh look, there's a, it's Disney World. He said, oh, there's a Disney World mug here saw the price and I was like, oh, yeah. Left it on the shelf, browsed around. Normally I only pay up to two pounds for a Disney mug. Some of them, you know, if they're rare, they can go for 20, 30 pounds. Most sell for 10 pounds on average. So that's why I, I cap it at two pounds when I'm, I'm looking to to buy Disney mugs. Um, but I am denied, and eventually I said, you know what, I'm just gonna get it. <laughs> I just really, really liked it. It's huge, look at the size of that. Um, yeah, unfortunately it's not one of the special rare ones, and I'm probably gonna get 10 to 12 pounds back on it, um, which is not great for the three pounds. When you take into account your fees, your eBay fees, your tax, you know, everything else on top that comes out of your profit margin, um, there's not a lot left in it. But I bought it anyway, and it is rather sweet. And with Christmas coming up, you know, hopefully I'll get a quicker sale on that. So lastly, in the charity shop, I spotted a set of four of these very lovely goblets. They're an ivory colour and they have like an iridescent, pearlescent type glaze on them. And they were reduced and obviously they've been in that charity shop for a while but I've not seen them before so I've obviously just glanced over them or dismissed them or whatever but they were reduced from 12 to six pounds. So I thought I would take a chance on them, mostly because when I turned them over, I realized they're Iden pottery. And I have sold Iden pottery before, and it's done well for me. So I thought a set of four of these goblets, especially around Christmas time, I thought they would do well. So I thought the six pounds was worth paying 
for the four goblets. And I'm going to try about 35. I'll obviously put offers, but I'm going to try about 35 pounds for the set of four. There are various different goblets listed on eBay. Um, most of them are the kind of the more rustic design that Iden Pottery do. But these are just sort of so special. Really lovely for a special occasion. And especially for this sort of festive time of the year with New Year and Christmas. Just thought they would be really, really nice. So I'm going to try 35 for the set. And that is everything today, short and sweet. But um, thank you for sticking around and listening to my wafflings. It was a small haul, but I hope that you enjoyed it anyway. And um, yeah, I'm thinking out of everything, this week it's the plant pot for me and the dilemma of, <laughs> of the gravy boat. Because you know, if I fall in love with another item of red and white pottery, and I have three things, apparently once you have three things of anything, you have a collection. So I could be starting a red and white collection. Don't tell Nick. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let me know what your favorite item was, as usual. I shall love you and leave you. Take care, everybody. Have a lovely week, whatever you're doing. Bye for now.